Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows. It was a year ago since I did the last tips and tricks video for the Oculus Quest, and we're about to get a new wave of virtual reality users, and we've had many throughout the year already, so it's a perfect time to bring many of you up to speed with ways to make your life much easier with your Oculus Quest and virtual reality in general. Veterans, you may know many of these already as we've been through the wars, we have been through that journey to figure all of this out. But hopefully there's something here that you're going to learn as well. Because we have nearly 30 tips and tricks to go over, so please join the Oculus Quest 2 giveaway down below, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. So the first one is do not buy a second-hand 64 gigabyte Oculus Quest. Sorry to those trying to sell them, but Oculus discontinued this model for a 128 gigabyte model. And we are moving into a new phase of Quest gaming where games have been reaching the storage limit of the 64 gigabyte model. And this is not expected to stop. So with the 64 gigabyte model, you have some space taken up due to the operating system and some services, which leaves you with less storage than what's actually advertised. I've been hearing stories of people removing all of the files, all of their apps, just to make space for one game, which means you lose your save data, your game progress, your videos, your applications, everything, because Oculus do not have a cloud save solution in place just yet. So that is my first tip. Don't buy an old 64 gigabyte model Quest, unless it's an absolute bargain. Next is batteries. This sounds simple, but you do not want to go to play virtual reality and you have no battery power left in the controllers. And I would not recommend rechargeable ones either because the recharge accessory kits, they leave you in a position where when there's no battery left, you have to then charge them and you still can't play. You're still going to have to find batteries and put them in the remote so you can enjoy VR right now. What I have is a rechargeable battery set so I can alternate between the batteries. So whilst I'm playing, another set can charge. This is better for the environment than constantly throwing away disposable batteries and it doesn't leave you in a position like some accessory kits do where you're just not gonna have any power available. So that's my recommendation. Next is to do with gaming PCs. So once you've played the Oculus Quest and you have a taste for virtual reality, you'll want to try better visual experiences that are only going to be available on PC due to the horsepower that's required to do so. Half-Life Alex or Robo Recall are examples of this. Stunning games on PC that either cannot be played on the Quest or look terrible on the Quest, almost unplayable in comparison. And virtual reality demands are increasing faster than our hardware progression, meaning virtual reality is having to find new ways to optimize performance. But it currently means if you want to play these new intense VR experiences, you'll need very expensive hardware, which is a pain. But luckily there are some cloud solutions that are going to allow you guys to try PC VR gaming without having to spend a small fortune on a computer using the power of the cloud on a subscription model. So this allows you to play only when you feel like it with a subscription model from Pluto Sphere or Shadow PC for a high-end gaming PC to play VR on. All you have to do is connect to the PC with an app that you can sideload onto the Quest or use virtual desktop. This is going to cost you around £30 a month for a subscription, which is way better than a £2,000 gaming PC, which is £83 a month over two years, and that's without interest. So if you want to give high-end VR experiences a go, I recommend trying the cloud service first before you shed out all of your money on a gaming PC. And I do have a dedicated video talking about and showing off this cloud gaming service. Next is hand grips. This is something you're going to see a lot of. When I first started playing virtual reality, I was not used to gripping a controller. Whilst I was trying to release the grip button and throw something, it felt like I was just going to throw my controller at something and break it. And it made me feel uneasy and it took me out of the immersive experience due to Let's call it VR anxiety. So getting these grips, they are great protectors for your Quest controls. They also help them to stay clean, but they allow you to relax in VR, stop you from gripping the controller, squeezing really hard, giving you sore finger joints, being stressed, and you just don't want to play anymore. It seems like such a small thing, but it makes such a huge difference, and it is a must-have accessory. You have great options available from Kiwi Design or VR Cover if you are interested in looking into these. Face sweat hygiene, a very simple one again that I feel is incredibly important, especially with long use of the product that you're gonna have for a very long time. So this is actually going to save you money in the long term. And it's also going to look after your skin during hot sweaty play sessions. And that is buying a silicone facial insert cover and an extra cushiony insert. So the cushiony insert, which I recommend VR cover, is going to allow the headset to feel soft on your face, allowing for longer play sessions without you feeling the Oculus Quest dragging your face down to the ground and you end up looking like the Emperor. 
or you have a red Oculus logo around your face because the headset's been tugging on it and made it sore. So it's going to allow you to have longer play sessions before you are ready to give up and save your face. The silicone cover is a personal favorite of mine. It goes over the facial insert so you have nice comfort, but this is going to prevent any absorption of oils from your face and in turn prevent your face from being in contact with anything that could be incredibly dirty. It's then very easy to clean with a nice wipe after a sweaty VR session. This I find is very important as long term you're exposing your face to lots of weight and lots of dirt so you want to look after that. So this one is winter is coming. Virtual reality can be very annoying in the winter because when you put your headset on, the lenses are going to fog up due to your body heat and your breath rising up through the nose gap. You'll often be taking off the headset, wiping away the condensation, and it becomes frustrating. So before starting a game, warm up the lenses. Use a radiator or a hairdryer, of course. Do not overheat and melt them. You just want to lightly brush it with some heat to raise the core temperature. You don't want to burn them. You can also use your breath. I often use my breath and a cloth and wipe the lenses and use a bit of friction to warm them up. But do not use warm liquids and leave it in the sun or on a heat source. Hopefully this is going to help you guys with the issue of having to take your headset on and off again to get rid of condensation. So it's going to make your VR experience in winter a lot more enjoyable. So let's talk about glasses now. I think this is a great one because I hear often people with glasses, Putting on a virtual reality headset is not that comfortable. Although Oculus, they do provide a glasses spacer to provide you extra room in the headset, it's still an inconvenience and you still risk scratching your glasses and the VR lenses. So if you wear glasses, there is a company called VR Wave that do prescription lenses for your Quest headset. These lenses don't have to be replaced, they simply go over the existing lens and then provide a dual purpose, protecting your headset from scratching the lenses and allowing you to play without having to wear your glasses. You can even apply additional blue light filters and anti-glare filters. But it can be expensive, around $130 or more, but it's solving a real problem for far and nearsighted folks that could be preventing many of them getting into virtual reality. So I think if you're curious or you're really getting into VR, this is something you should look into. Only if you wear glasses, obviously. Next is a mat. A solution that can be solved in many ways, cheap or expensive, is a mat. Some sort of floor indicator to let you know where your play space is so you can stay central in a room that has little space available. When you first use a mat, you do at first consciously think about it, like, oh, I'm off my spot. Where is it? Let me find it again. But eventually you get used to it and you don't think about it anymore. I started off using a six pound mat from Ikea and I use that as my pivot point when playing games that allowed me to feel more relaxed in VR knowing I'm not going to swing my arms and smash the glass cabinets that were behind me at that point or the TV. Although, funnily enough, I did end up smashing my TV when I wasn't using the mat. There are branded versions of this solution, such as Proxy Mat, that provide different styles for different VR experiences. They are also kind of kind of stylish. And I know some of you may say the Guardian, the Guardian, which yes, the Guardian can help, but I'll continue that point in this next tip. So next, the Guardian. The Guardian is the boundary you lay out telling the headset, this is my play space. If I approach the edge of my play space, activate and tell me that I'm getting close to the edge so it prevents me from hitting anything and improving my safety. It's a great safety feature, but when I first started playing VR, this annoyed me like crazy. I found the Guardian is good for letting you know if you are moving out of your play space in larger rooms, but in a play space where all you have available is basically a stationary boundary or a few feet in either direction, it just becomes incredibly annoying and takes you out of the immersive experience. So it's going to be a good mix with the tip we just spoke about with another tip I'll say after this one. So you, what you want to do is experiment with the Guardian settings. So go to the settings, go to Guardian, and there is actually a section that lets you adjust the sensitivity of your boundary. I found this incredibly useful adjusting the sensitivity because it allowed me to get closer to the edge of the boundary before it activated and took me out of the immersion in a smaller play space. The last thing you want is you're just playing Beat Saber standing still when the fact that your arms are going out wide trying to slash blocks activates the Guardian. So having the mat, adjusting the Guardian and this next tip is going to improve your safety and allow yourself to get immersed in VR. So the next is a spinny chair. The spinny chair is a VR accessory that I swear by and I'm sure many others are going to be by my side. VR can be exhausting. After two hours of Beat Saber or standing up, lunging and squatting on your legs, it can get tiring. 
And sometimes you don't even want to stand and play because you're having a lazy day. The physicality of VR is what makes it amazing, but also puts some people off trying VR because they're used to just putting their feet up and moving their thumbs playing FIFA or Call of Duty. A chair would also keep you central and allow you to stay still whilst turning in 360 degrees so you can be safe knowing you're not going to overreach and smash things. This chair has saved me so many times playing Echo Arena when you want to give yourself a little extra reach to grab the disc and if I wasn't in the chair I'll be diving straight into a wall. The amount of times when Echo first released I heard people smashing things in game. It's, it happens all the time. Next is side quest and quest veterans are going to be all over this but new comes to VR you may not be aware of it. You are missing out on an entire world that takes the quest experience up a notch. SideQuest is an app that you can get on your mobile or your PC that allows you to put paid for or free experiences onto your headset that are not approved for the official Quest store. This can be things such as Beat Saber modifications, great games that are just in development, 2D applications, Quest features. There is so much there to enjoy, but to enable it, you have to follow the instructions that SideQuest have provided. I will leave a link down below in the description. You basically have to make an organization claiming that you are a dev studio, then verify who you are with a credit card or a phone number. But do not worry, no money is used in this process. It's just for authenticating. Then connect your headset to your phone, go to the settings and turn on developer mode. You'll now be able to connect to SideQuest on your phone or your computer and enjoy these additional experiences. Number 12 is App Lab. Again, VR veterans will know this, but I recently got some friends who bought Oculus Quest and they were just not aware that there was a Quest hidden store called App Lab which you can't find through the official store, so how would you know about it, I suppose? Luckily, SideQuest, and you don't have to set up SideQuest to enjoy this, SideQuest has all the App Lab games filtered so you can see what's available on the hidden store. Because there are some amazing titles, and many of them are free, of course, many are not as well. So you can search for these games on SideQuest and also go to the Quest store and search for the game there once you know the name of the title. So this would mean there are three stores for you to enjoy. There's the Quest store, App Lab, SideQuest, and itch.io so maybe four stores for you to enjoy in Quest. Next is turning your headset into a console, and I love this one. The Quest can be more than just a VR headset. It can be a portable gaming console for flat screen gaming and media. So if you've gone through the SideQuest process already, you can actually put Android APKs onto your headset, which once you're set up is literally as simple as downloading the APK and dragging and dropping it into SideQuest. So do not be put off by this process. You can also connect a Bluetooth controller to your Quest headset and use it as a joypad for your flat screen games. I used an Xbox Bluetooth remote and a PlayStation 4 controller to achieve this. It just needs Bluetooth. So you are then able, for example, to put Call of Duty Mobile onto your headset, which I do have a dedicated video showing you how to do that, as well as put GTA San Andreas onto the headset as well and play it with the gamepad. Because there are some nuances needed for the larger mobile games, but you can then basically turn your headset into a 2D mobile gaming headset as as well as a VR headset, which is uh, incredibly handy. Sometimes you don't want to play VR. Maybe you're on a plane. You can sit there playing San Andreas on your, in your headset on a massive, massive screen. Number 14 is the Developer Hub. There is actually a dashboard that you can use called the Oculus Developer Hub that if you've signed up to SideQuest, you will have a developer's account so you can download this. It gives you easy access, functions and data points that some people may find interesting, such as performance metrics, allowing you to install things such as OVR metrics or Perfetto for lower level traces to see what games destroyed the quest. And it, that could be interesting. It also has some ADB commands that you can save and execute, which is very handy for things such as boot Boosting the quest resolution, changing the recording capture bitrate and scale. This is some lower level stuff for people who really want to get stuck in and enjoy the nerdy side of owning an Oculus Quest because the operating system is an Android OS so you can do these things on it. So if you're a content creator or you just like data, this is going to be a hub that's going to be very useful for you for enabling certain features that are just not available on the default Oculus application. Next, let's talk about wireless PC VR, because you can use your Quest as a wireless PC VR headset using virtual desktop or the Air Link. But in a household where your Wi-Fi box may be Wi-Fi box, where your router may be far away from your PC and it's being used by many people at once, it's going to make your wireless experience less reliable due to reduced bandwidth, interference, and collisions. So what I have done and what I recommend is buy a dedicated router and a cable with RJ45 connectors. And this router would then 
only be used for wireless PC VR gaming. So you connect the router using a cable to your computer. So you've created a wired connection between the router and the computer. So what this does is gives you a connection from your headset to the router, which then connects to your PC. And because you've set it up this way, even though the router is not connected to the internet, your computer is still connected via the normal means that you're already using. Meaning you can still play wireless PC VR online. So this is going to give you the best possible connection from the headset to the router because it's only being used from the headset and then you then get a wired connection directly to the PC as well which is connected to the internet for multiplayer experiences. So that's it for me today guys. Please comment down below if there was anything I missed out and it would be helpful for others to know. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Happy gaming. Good day.